is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of MaxList. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps professionals find fulfilling careers. One of the best ways to get good at job hunting is to talk to people who do it well. That's why once a month, I interview a MaxList reader who found a job they love. Our guest today is Rachel Shields Ebersol. She's the manager of Urban Office Portland. It's a co-working space in Southwest Portland. Rachel believes that every job search needs a clear focus. And she adds that you must make connections in the industry where you want to work. In a story you can find on the MaxList website, Rachel says that knowing she wanted to manage a co-working space was crucial to her success. After Rachel set this goal, she researched the industry and talked with other managers at co-working spaces. That gave her a better understanding of local trends and challenges in the business. It also helped Rachel find her dream job. Why do you love your job, Rachel? You know, there are so many things that go into the magic potion of loving a job that it's hard to pinpoint exactly. But some of the things are that um, I get to work really independently. So um, if I decide I want to try having a birthday party um, for the business, then I can do that. And um, it's really fun to have that creativity and freedom. And I love that the owner of the space is willing to give me that freedom. Um, I think one of the reasons we both knew it would be a fit was that we had similar visions for what a co-working community would look like. So because we share that vision, he can just kind of trust me to work towards that. So that wasn't a surprise after you started the job. You knew you would have that kind of uh, freedom to act on creative ideas. That's true. I knew that I would have a boss who was not around very much, <laughs> but um, and that was it's appealing. been great. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's listening. Yes. Hello, Eric. <laughs> Good. Well, tell us about your search. Um, what was your biggest challenge, Rachel? Well, certainly being new to Portland was a big challenge. We got here last August from Vermont and didn't know very many people at all. So getting to know who was doing interesting things, what was happening in the city was really important to me just to find out where did I want to fit in and what kind of people did I want to connect myself with. And how did you do that? Because you came to Portland. We have listeners all over the country, or maybe some are considering moving here, but others might be moving to other cities. What were the steps you took to understand the local job market? I went to a lot of events, not necessarily just networking events, um, but things that seemed interesting or were put on by interesting organizations. And I did some good volunteer work. I volunteered with a lot of little mini conferences um, that sounded interesting. So uh, Virtue Lab put on a conference that was all about sustainable science startups. And I really enjoyed just greeting people at the door there, but then getting to listen to lots of talks and talking to really interesting people. So that was a great way to get to know just what was happening in the city and who the players were. How did you pick those events? Because every medium or large size city might have dozens or even several hundred events uh, in the course of a day. How did you know those were the ones that were going to be right for your job search? I don't know that I was terribly strategic about it, just if they sounded interesting to me. Okay. Connections are important in any job search, but especially when you come to a, a new city. How did you build your connections? Yeah, the volunteering was definitely helpful because you got to know um, people in an organization. Um, I reached out to a few people who just were doing really interesting work as I read about different events and um, looked at some news of things that were happening in Portland you encouraged me to reach out to Ashley Henry um, when I was reading about the work she was doing with Business for a Better Portland, and she was a great encouragement and resource in getting connected in the city, and I really appreciated her welcome. So not being afraid to reach out and say, hi, you don't know me, but 
it seems like you're doing really wonderful things and I would love to be able to do wonderful things like you. So can I buy you coffee? And you found people would say yes to that. Absolutely. But you got some rejection too, I'm guessing. Not much. Okay. Um, Sometimes people just were busy. uh, So potentially that was a rejection. Um, So there were a few people who just, we couldn't make it work with the schedule. But I never had anybody say no. And I don't think I had a whole lot of people who just didn't respond either. Most people responded. What advice would you give to a job seeker who's just moved to Portland? I think being outgoing is really important. Um, Everyone in Portland has been friendly and welcoming and willing to sit down for coffee if I've asked, but I've definitely had to make the first move. What would you say to people who, a listener who is shy or introverted? Mm. I think uh, focusing on meeting people around a topic area is really helpful. Even, you know, I feel introverted many a day. So going to an event that's about a topic that is interesting, um, a talk in your industry or just a fun arts event can really give you something to connect with people about. Um, But also volunteering I find is helpful because then I'm working alongside people and I have a reason to talk to them rather than just putting on my outgoing self and talking to them for no apparent reason. Any other tips, Rachel, for a listener who might think it's it's hard to make connections, mm. either because of shyness or introversion or, or just it finds it challenging? I think people probably have to figure that out for themselves a little bit based on their own personality. For me, I trust that people will be friendly and so I approach them as if they will be friendly and then they are so um, having that mindset has been really has worked for me Um, I am fairly self-confident so I don't know if that will always work for people who have less confidence Um, but I'm sure that if they experiment and are willing you know there's like you said there's hundreds of events happening so Just give something a try at one event, and if it doesn't work, that's all right. You can go to a bunch of other ones. In your article on the MaxList website, you said you got a piece of advice you found very useful, and that was to be clear about your Mm -hmm. career goal. How did you get that focus, Rachel? That was hard. I just had to pick one and say, this is what I'm going to focus on so that I can find a good job. Um, There could have been a lot of jobs I would have been happy to do, but I helped start a co-working space in Vermont where I moved here from, and I really loved that bringing together of um, creating community and supporting people in following their own passion in their businesses. So I knew that I would be happy doing that kind of work as one of the possibilities and just decided to hone in on it. And you said you had a there were other things that interested you. Mm -hmm. How did you know this was the thing that interested you the most? Did you go through a process or how how did you arrive at that decision? I think that I would have tried another avenue if this hadn't worked out, but I just had to pick one to start with. You had a fallback plan. Sure. Okay. Okay. Good. And so this was your first choice, but you had a second, maybe even a third choice. Well, sure. I, the day that I got offered the job at urban office, I had an interview with, um, a nonprofit that I thought was doing really amazing work and would have been really happy to work with them as well. And that was, that was a pretty different job. That was kind of an events manager position. So still very people focused, still bringing people together, still keeping everything organized, but definitely a different job description. So even though I printed out my, you know, here's my list of all the things I'm looking for and gave it to people and said, I'm looking for a co-working manager position. I definitely applied for other jobs. You also mentioned in your article that one of the things that was helpful was you, once you knew your goal, you went out and talked to other managers of co-working spaces. Uh, Tell us about that. 
Yeah, that's the entire reason that I got this job was I signed up for tours at all of the co-working spaces and one of the co-working spaces happened to be in the middle of hiring. So I got a tour and an interview. Okay. <laughs> and when you signed up for those tours, how did you approach the the company? Did you say, I'm interested in renting space or I, I would like to learn more about the industry? I'd, I used to manage this space and I, I'm considering doing that here in Portland. What was your approach? More the second. Um, just I ran a co-working space. Or I helped start a co-working space in Vermont. And it seems like there's interesting things happening in here here in Portland, everything is so different. Um, what's your space like? And how do you like your job? And do you have any advice for me about how I could get involved in this world? And what was your experience when you approached these other uh, companies? Did Were people pretty open to meeting with you? Well, yes, because every co-working space gives tours all the time. Um, that's sort of one of the main parts of a co-working manager's job. Um, so typically I would sign up for a tour and talk to them about it on the tour. And everybody was really open to sharing their experience with me, certainly. Um, most co-working spaces are, or at least the ones I went to look at, are small and are lucky if they have a full-time staff person. So, um, you know, I wasn't there to say, like, can I have your job? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that took some pressure off, too. Um, I, I wasn't there saying, you should hire me because you clearly have lots of extra personnel money. Um, but just what's your read on the industry? Okay. So it, tell, tell us more about that because I think sometimes people struggle with being clear that they're looking for work and how to ask for information that's going to be helpful to a search what would you say when you were on one of those tours or perhaps just reaching out by email to the manager of a co-working space? I think just asking about their journey. How did you end up here? What attracted you to the industry? Is anybody doing anything exciting or interesting that you think I should know about? The job you have was never advertised, was it? It was not. Now, why was that? You know, I think it was mostly because it was a really quick timeline. Um, and because it's a fairly tight-knit industry, I think the previous manager knew some good candidates. So since he already knew some people to bring in um, and the timeline was short, I think he just went straight to interviews. And you didn't know this manager before you reached out and asked for a tour and a conversation to learn about the industry, did you? I had had one email interaction with him before because they had advertised a part-time assistant manager position. And in one place online, it didn't say it was part-time, and one place it did. So I just emailed and said, hey, is this full-time or part-time? It was really not a terribly inspiring email. Um, <laughs> and they said, it's part-time. And I said, great, thanks. I need full-time. And so then when I signed up for a tour, when I was actually here, um, the manager remembered that I had asked that question. You'd sent that original email from right. Vermont before he moved to Oregon. Right. So he said, are you still looking? Because actually we do have a full-time position now. So it wasn't very strategic. It was just making a connection and knowing there's a real person on the other end of that email and um, not being afraid to reach out. It sounds very strategic to me, hmm. Rachel, because you reached out to somebody in your target industry. That's true. And it was a, uh, a profession where you had experience and you were excited about it. Uh, you'd enjoyed the previous work you'd done. Uh, and... So, yeah, I, I think that is was very strategic of you. I will accept your judgment. Thank <laughs> <Okay>. you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I love your story because often when people hear that jobs are filled through word of mouth, they think that it goes to like a an in-law or mm -hmm. an old high school or college classmate. But you had a connection with this manager. It wasn't a particularly strong one, was it? No, not at all. Yeah. But do you think it gave you an advantage uh, having had that previous contact, taken the tour, shared your story? Oh, absolutely. I think if I hadn't sent that email previously, just asking about the part-time job, I, I wouldn't have gotten an interview for the 
full-time job when it came up. What didn't work in your job search, Rachel? I think giving people my resume um, as a way for them to try to help me wasn't very, I don't think that worked very well. I don't think it worked very well to give people my resume as a way for them to help me. Um, But honing down sort of these are companies I'm interested in working for and these are some of my skills, um, which was some advice that Sean Harry at the SBDC gave me, was really helpful. Tell me that acronym, what it means. Oh, the Small Business Development Corporation? Okay. Something. I'm not sure what the C is, actually. It's okay. (laughs) So... Being able to give people something more specific about these are the kinds of connections or these are the types of organizations that would be helpful to be connected to was a lot better than just saying, here's my resume, you figure out what I'm good at. Or let me know if you hear of something. Right, right. Yeah, that too. Yeah. What's your number one job hunting tip? Don't be afraid to be outgoing and talk to people and ask about their jobs. Um, And I think... Be willing to listen to them and treat them as if they're really interesting people because they are. And that leads you to learn more about things that you could do that are really interesting. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Rachel. And you can learn more about Rachel Shields Ebersol's job search by visiting maxlist.org slash stories. And check out the MaxList website for dozens of other success stories. On the second Friday of every month, we add a new interview with a MaxList reader who's found a dream job. Go to maxlist.org slash stories. In the meantime, thank you for listening to today's bonus episode of Find Your Dream Job. <laughs>